<clears throat> and live. Hi there. Um, good evening, everyone who might be joining in. We're gonna we'll start the meeting in a couple of minutes, just waiting for additional folks to join. Uh actually waiting for one more um panelist commissioner to join hopefully that will be in the next minute or so and let's also give a little extra time for members of the public or others to get logged into the zoom meeting so we'll officially start the meeting in just a minute or two thank you for your patience i do see chris uh swatel in the attendee list and i just um switched him over excellent and we have, okay, let me see, I can, we got lots of attendees, don't we? Okay, so it's, I've got 701 and looks like we've got everyone here that's going to be here. All right, so this is uh, the... Hi, Chris, do you mind muting your mic when you have a moment, please? Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, good evening again, everyone. We will officially call to order the uh, meeting of the Newburyport Historical Commission for the 13th of April, 2023. Please be aware that this proceeding, like all the virtual city meetings, is being recorded. Uh, I'll begin with a roll call of the commissioners. Um, in alphabetical order, we have Mr. Biff Baus, and if you could reply to that, we'll also verify your audio is working. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Chris. Uh, Biff, we can hear you fine. Christopher Fay? I'm here. Okay, hear you fine, Chris. Joe Morgan? Here. Okay, thanks. We hear you. And Chris Sotel? I'm here. Yep, and we hear you well. And this is the chair, Glenn Richards, speaking. Absent are Andrew Bernhardt and Mark Sindrone. Uh, also, Caitlin Sullivan is running the meeting, City one of the city planners, and Gretchen Joy is taking minutes. Um, normally, the uh, only people who have audio enabled are the panelists here. That's the commissioners and one member of public at a time. And I'll get to the rules on public comment period uh, when we get to that there. I'm fairly confident there'll be public comment period or periods this evening. But I want to try to move right along if I can. <clears throat> we have two demolition delay applications. Now, the order in which I'm taking them is the order that was on the printed agenda, which is uh, has 58 Jefferson Street first. Uh, I think the online agenda had these uh, 71 High Street first, but I decided it might be better to go with the printed version uh, as kind of the official posted version, so to speak. So and it doesn't make too much difference, I hope, to anyone. <clears throat> so that would be um, uh, 58 Jefferson Street. I believe they're represented by me, Tillerman, and, and Costa. I think uh, Ben Taylor is going to be speaking to them. Let's see. And I see he's in the attendees there. Do you want to enable uh, audio for Ben, uh, Caitlin? It looks like he is. So, Ben, you'll have to unmute yourself on your end if you're going to speak. And is Al, uh, let's see, DiBiazzo, is, uh, your talking is permitted as well, but of course, you know, one at a time. So, you're still, looks like you're still muted at your end, Ben. Oh, there you go. Uh, well, we barely hear. We hear strange noises and what sounds like somebody trying to make themselves heard, Ben. But it's not coming through very well. Uh, okay. Wanna, well, one oh, is this. Is this any better? Oh, much, much better. Much better. Okay. No, I think I was getting an echo with my speaker. My apologies. Um, Hey, so uh, yeah, at any point, if you can't hear me, please, please do speak up. Um, so for your record, I am uh, Ben Taylor. Uh, I'm an attorney at Mead Talman and Costa, 30 Green Street in Newburyport. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of the owners and applicants, um, Jonathan and Alexis Kelleher, as well as their architect on the project, Al DiBiasso. Um, and uh, with that, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, so the structure we're focusing on tonight is uh, 58 Jefferson Street. Um, it's the third or fourth house down on the left on Jefferson Street when you when you turn off a of high street. Um, it's a it has a two and a half uh, front portion of the house with uh, some one and one and a half uh, portions to the rear, as you'll see in the photos in a moment. Uh, it was constructed in or about 1850. Uh, according to the assessor records and circa 1870, according to the district data sheets, uh, it's listed as contributing with side hall Italianate uh, style. Um, there's no form B for the property. 
Um, it has undergone some changes, however, uh, since the 1980s when the district data sheets were prepared. Um, one of the changes was a single story, uh, 12 foot by 16 foot uh, addition constructed on the right side of the house uh, via 2001 ZVA special permit. Uh, there also are four uh, shed dormers on the two and a half uh, front, uh, two and a half story front portion of the house, uh, two on each side of the gable roof. Um, we think those are added uh, 2005 or earlier. Um, there also uh, has been added a rear single story mudroom to the rear left of the structure, as well as some decking. Um, there's also a bay window on the left hand side of the structure. Uh, so we go to the next slide, please. Small correction, by the way, Ben, uh, those are uh, gable dormers, not shed dormers. Okay, thank you, Chair. <laughs> um, so here is the um, district data sheets. Again, it identifies 58 uh, Jefferson Street, uh, 1870 construction date, side hall Italian 8. Uh, we go to the next slide, please. Uh, so if we could zoom in, uh, the red circle kind of in the middle uh, center. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so, so that's the structure uh, according to the um, 1924 assessor maps. Uh, again, you can see uh, what you know appears to be at least looking at the footprint, like a pretty standard side hall, um, side hall style. But as you'll see later, that that um, you know the current footprint really doesn't resemble much of that. You can still make it out, but you can see how it's changed over time compared to what's shown here. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this is just a document, um, you know, the 2005 or earlier uh, date of the dormer construction. This is actually from Google Earth. Um, they have some archival uh, satellite views. This is from 2005. So this is the earliest we could make out the dormers. Um, there's much clearer ones later on, but um, this just to try to, you know, date those. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so here we're getting into the existing uh, conditions now. This is the uh, left left hand side elevation as well as the front elevation as viewed from uh, the sidewalk on Jefferson Street. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is the, well, notwithstanding my uh, questionable photography to get the pole and tree in there, <laughs> but uh, this is the right hand side of the structure as well as the front. Uh, you can see that uh, one story addition uh, coming off of the right side there. Uh, next slide, please. Um, here's a better view, uh, photo from the from the clients, um, from the, I guess, uh, rear left of the backyard. Um, again, that's primarily the left side of the structure with the um, one story addition. You can start to see the uh, rear right of the structure as well. Um, go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is more of a close-up angle of that left side. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and here we are getting more towards the rear. Um, again, that uh, one, one and a half story on the right, um, with the right here, we believe that, you know, could be seen in the 1924 assessor's map. So it was around at least since then, probably part of the original structure. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, this is just shifting over a little bit more. Um, more, more centrally towards the rear. Again, you can start to see the, the changes that were added on, um, perhaps in different stages by different owners um, with the rear deck and also the rear, um, rear mudroom there with the uh, cedar shingle siding. Uh, next slide. Um, and then finally, just kind of going full circle here, this is more showing the uh, rear deck and rear, ele rear elevation generally. Um, next slide, please. Um, that, that's all I have for right now. Uh, I'm happy to turn this over, uh, you know, back to the chair. Obviously, the structure has um, undergone some changes since the 1980s that, um, you know, may have diminished its significance. But you know, I defer to your um, your judgment and discretion on that. Thank you. <laughs> I think the expression is our infinite wisdom. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Ben. You, by the way, you don't mind me being as informal as, to refer to you as Ben. Is that okay? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Been called oh, okay. a lot worse. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So thank you, um, Ben Taylor. The um, So our first decision is about A, historically significant and to be considered for preservation or not. Um, I don't think there's any question here of being historically significant and not considered for preservation. That would be the case if something was like a total wreck. 
uh, or so badly changed or whatever. So um, uh, so let me see first if um, some my colleagues on the board have a comment or a question, either a question for uh, either the um, attorney there, uh, Ben Taylor, or uh, for anyone at all, or or a comment to make regarding whether or not this uh, should be deemed historically significant and considered for preservation. Anyone want to opine on that? Well, Biff, you look like you're. I'm looking at your video. You look like you're thinking really hard. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask you if you have any thoughts. Sure. I'm, I'm I probably always look like that. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think I could easily uh, just go ahead and uh, make a motion to the to vote that this this house is uh, historic and considered for preservation. Um, right. I don't know if there's much much to discuss about about that fact. Okay, that that's that's fine with me. So uh, I consider a motion has been made to, to uh, vote on whether that it's historically significant and considered for preservation. Uh, that's that's your motion, right, Debbie? Correct, correct. And is there a second for that? Seconded, this is Joe. Okay, thank you, Joe. So let me, I want to do a better job of getting my notes to read. I kind of messed up a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, um, Okay, so that's the motion. Uh, a yes vote means it's historically significant and considered for preservation, and we would go on to review the demo plan, etc. Uh, no vote means you do not consider it historically significant and considered for preservation, in which case that would end our discussion of the matter. Okay, so I'll go around in alphabetical order. So Biff, you're first, your vote on that? Yes. Thank you. Chris Fay? Yes. Thank you, Chris. Joe Morgan? Yes. Thank you. Chris Sotel? Yes. Okay. Chair agrees. Uh, all right. So, so Ben, um, so um, it's deemed uh, historically significant and considered for preservation. So we'll uh, move on to uh, the dem demo plan review and um, uh, uh, and discussion of that, uh, which will also include a public comment period. So we we'll usually start with your presentation of uh, the demo plan, which uh, is actually both combination of demo and uh, architectural plans for what you plan to do. So you want to uh, go ahead with that, Ben, and, and if the architect, Mr. DiBiazzo, wants to chime in, that's fine as well. Sure. Um, so we just go to the next slide, please. Um, so this is the site plan. Uh, it shows, I guess, in the lighter uh, shading there, the existing footprint as well as the um, existing features. And then on the uh, darker shaded there to the rear, that's the um, footprint of, of what's proposed. Um, so, and I guess just to summarize before I hand it off to um, Al in a few moments. So, so what is proposed is to um, tear down the rear portions of the structure. Um, uh, both the existing, uh, well, I guess the right hand, the rear right hand of the structure, which, um, as we know, is at least it's been there since at least 1924. So that constitutes a partial roof line change, um, as, as well as removing the rear, uh, on the rear left hand side, that mud room and the rear decking. Um, in its place is proposed a um, two story addition. Um, and can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, hey, ben, quick question on yes. that slide. I did have a question on that plot plan real quick. Uh, sure. It shows the a lot of that decking and patio and so forth in gray, but on some of the actual plans, it looked like there was still decking there. Can you clarify that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So so the lighter portions um, that are in gray, th those are the existing conditions. So mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, those, those are existing. So like the... Um, so no, okay, the, so the, so there'll still be some decking back there. That's there. Uh, oh, you're talking, yeah, there, there's going to be a little bit. So the rear left, um, there's going to be a small sort of, um, I don't know, I, I guess decking entryway feature um, mm -hmm. to the rear there. So they, you know, you can make out some steps there. Um, yeah, there'll still there'll still be some, but that'll be part of the new. All right, uh, we new can. Addition. Yeah. Okay. No need to belabor. Thanks. Okay. Sure. Um, so go to the next slide, please, Caitlin. 
Um, so with that, I'm, I'm happy to turn it over to Al now to go over the design. Al is on and I will mute. And, and Al, just so I'm, I'm, we're, we're all clear on this. First of all, I, we, we love it when you show the uh, existing and proposed uh, next to each other or, or like this, so we can do a comparison. Um, the existing uh, is missing a lot of the detail that's in the proposed, but um, we shouldn't imply from that that there's any uh, changes. For example, the east elevation, I don't think you're proposing any real changes to that. So um, just the fact that it's blank on top and has clavers on the bottom, does that actually mean anything or is that just, just to save some time on the rendering? Um, actually, a drawing was done it didn't make the presentation apparently ah. there was a more recent drawing done with all the existing uh conditions shown um but you're correct um the parts that are that are just outlined as windows are all things that are not being changed the the upper drawings show with large hash marks the things that are being changed okay the lower parts obviously show the finished product okay thanks Yeah, so this on the left side of this slide where we're looking at the existing and proposed east elevation, the only real change there is a small on the left side, you can see the new a bit of the new addition poking out there, correct? Correct. It's 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 um, obviously beyond the rear of the existing uh, right. blocks of the building. Right, beyond that bay window thing. Okay. And on the, and on the right hand side of the slide. Uh, you, as you say, you've got the hash marks that shows the demo demolition to the um, the addition that's on the right there, and it looks like you've got uh, a window change there as well, adding a window in the existing structure. Oh, oh correct. Yes, yes, we're removing uh, windows that are facing um, west, and just the, you know, is a bathroom in that corner in order to maintain a window in the bathroom. That's what that small window is doing. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh oh, all the way in the back, that one. Yes, when we get to the uh, east, uh, the west elevation, you'll see um, where the windows are being taken mm -hmm. out because the new roof is going across there. Yeah, so I, so actually, I think technically you probably should have hashed over the roof as well because obviously that's going away. That's going to be demoed. Yes, I was I was uh, interpreting the rule as um, walls and vertical surfaces. Only. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, not a big deal. We we understand what you just want to make sure everyone understands exactly what the plan is here. And I, and the existing shows a chimney that it go that's going away. I take it. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Anything else you want to say about this, or should we go to the next slide? Uh, next slide. Good. So on the uh, top left again on the existing west elevation you can see the hashed area is where the new addition will intersect the old building and you mm -hmm. can see in that upper um, left hand quadrant of the hashed areas where the bathroom existing bathroom windows are now that will be removed so that's why we put the window around the corner um, all right just again for orientation for everyone this this west elevation this is looking at the rear of the house kind of from the backyard is that correct correct okay yeah just to just to clarify a point you were making earlier all the existing decks uh there, there no longer will be a um not all the existing decks where the kitchen is and where the door is on the west elevation to the left of the hashed area that's an existing deck and an existing door to remain Mm -hmm. There will be no door out the back of the addition to a new deck. So that deck in pergola will be removed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and I see the small, uh, kind of like an exit, small deck and stairs to the right that uh, Ben mentioned. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the south elevation, that would be the left side of the structure if you're uh, looking at it from Jefferson Street, correct? Correct. Yeah. The uh, existing, the main box of the existing house remains untouched. Right. Um, and we pushed everything that's new past the rear of the existing, um, rear wall of the existing main box. Right. And um, so, a uh, quick question on this uh, looking at the proposed south elevation, 
Um, the second story of that is that set back a bit. Uh, actually, looks like it's pretty much flush. If I look at the west elevation, it looks like it's flush with the main house, or is that right? Um, don't recall what that. I believe it's flush. Yeah, look, looking at the west elevation, it would appear to be. Yes, you, you can. Yeah, there's a roof return. Uh, shown on the south elevation, there's a roof return shown slightly left of the of the door, the entrance door. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only there um, for the roof return to die against the porch roof. There's no there's no return on the other side of that porch roof. It's all flush with the uh, the second floor. Correct is flush with the existing second floor. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Anything else? If not, we can move on. Um, that's all I have. Okay. What's on the next slide, Caitlin? I'll propose plans. Uh, yeah. So I'll just make some uh, you know comments in conclusion. Uh, so as we know, we've gone over the design. Uh, the proposal is to remove portions um, of the structure at, the, at its rear. Uh, you saw the two-story addition. Uh, so it's a slightly, slightly larger footprint in place of uh, what's being removed. Um, again, it constitutes a, a partial roof line change. Um, and actually, it was it was noted on the last plan shown, but the addition will have six over six windows, cedar cloudboard siding, architectural shingles, um, and wood trim and corner boards to match the existing structure. Uh, will be shorter in height and subordinate to the large front portion of the structure, which is remaining untouched, as Al mentioned. Um, and again, uh, the idea behind this is to clean up the rear of the structure, which had various, um, you know, changes and, and additions made and piecemeal over time by potentially different owners. Um, and also just want to mention quickly, um, our uh, owners here, even before they reached out to us and were in the very early stages of this project, did reach out to their butters. Um, they do have the support of the, the right side of butter and the rear yard of butters. Um, and we did get those uh, letters of support in um, earlier this morning. Um, but with that, um, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions the commission may have. Um, and I'm sure Al will as well. If there's anything, you know, technical about the plants. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. So let me first ask my fellow commissioners here. Does anyone have a question for either Ben or Al? Actually, I have uh, just one quick question. Just uh, what was the... Uh... What is the driving factor about uh, for for doing this construction? Was it to to uh, change the interior space to add to the interior space, or what was the kind of the driving factor about behind this project? Uh, they have a growing family and need more space. Okay. Um, okay. Have you um, any other questions from the board? I just had one quick one myself. Um, have you specced out the windows? Uh, I was wondering what what uh, you mentioned six over six. Anything else you can say about what the windows? Basically, as you can guess, um, we're we're always wondering if they're going to be uh, tr simulated divided light windows that have a you know three dimensional mountains or not. Yes, they will be the simulated divided light. Okay, so not the what my my predecessor referred to as masking tape muttons. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I understand the 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 uh, most authentic looking ones have three sets of grills inside, outside, and between the glass. Right. Is that what you plan to use? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, that was my question. Uh, I'll. I'm. We'll open it up for a brief public comment period uh, if see if there are any. So um, the directions are if you're a member of the public that's in the meeting here and wish to make a comment, please use the controls in the Zoom meeting to, quote, raise your hand virtually, of course. Uh, that will let us know that you wish to make a comment and we will uh, enable your audio. So just like with any other public meeting, please identify yourself, name and address, and make your brief comment. If you're on the phone by any chance, it's star nine to raise or lower your hand. Uh, so I'll officially open that and I'll give allow a few seconds to see if anyone has a comment to make. And not 
Seeing any. Okay, not seeing any, so I'll officially close the public comment period. Um, so we'll do a quick um, uh, round the panel here. Um, let's see, who, how about um, Chris? It's for Christopher Fay, any thoughts either way as to um, we need the next vote we need to take is, well, we have um, the only real, the next vote is whether the, it is the structure is preferably preserved. Um, if uh, if it is preferably preserved, that means we, um, well, technically it means that there's a demo delay that's imposed. However, if we've had the pub public hearing of the demo plans, so if we feel that the uh, demo plans and rebuild plans are acceptable, we can then have another motion to accept those plans uh, either as presented or with any conditions we might feel need to be imposed. And then, um, and then um, we can have a vote on that. So before we move to the motion as to whether it's perfectly preserved, any you know thoughts on this? Uh, so any, uh, Chris, any thoughts? Um, I, I don't have a lot. I think um, you know I'm I'm looking at the proposals. I don't see a tremendous tremendous difference um, in the front of the house. I think we've been sort of consistent with concerned more about the front of the house and the back of the house. So yep. it's just, there's so many different things that have happened to this house that I honestly can't keep uh, heads nor tails of, of where, <laughs> where, you know what I mean? Like yep. what's, what's being proposed that we're not taking down the, the original structure or proposing right. really to change that. So correct. it seems like it's mostly, unless I'm wrong, mostly concerned with replacing additions with other additions. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I would always be a little concerned about maybe going up too high, but uh, in the back. But I think that with the number of dormers that are already on this thing, I'm not sure that really detracts from it. Yeah, and so, uh, and they did keep the addition quite a bit lower than the original structure as well. Um, yeah. so okay, I'm, I'm thanks. I'm okay with that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thanks, uh, Biff. Any thoughts or comments from you? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, the approach and the, the styling uh, that this edition is taking, I, I do appreciate that. Um, I think if I, if I had any real concern or a, a objection to it, and it, it's probably not even in our purview, but I'm, in general, um, I'm, I don't like the trend that I'm seeing in a lot of houses that were you know, doubling and tripling floor plans and, and, and sizes um, beyond the fact that it just takes the home kind of out of its original, you know, kind of worker uh, mm -hmm. home quality, um, more of just a just kind of general uh, sense of what it does to, to neighborhoods when you start, um, mm -hmm. you know, increasing the, the size of the homes and, and what that does is overall prices and, and everything. Mm -hmm. um, in an already real expensive town. Um, I mean, that's really my only uh, objection, but I, I don't think it's really adding that much. It just seems like it's kind of, you know, maximizing the, the addition on the back. Um, so I'm not, I guess not terribly okay. against it, but yep. but that's just my thought on it. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, how about you uh, and uh, um, uh, Chris Sotel, any, any thoughts from you? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and, and by the way, if 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 someone's already said what you're thinking, you can just say, "I agree with so and so." But <laughs> well, well, yeah, I've I've agreed with everything all the commissioners have said. It's uh, it's it's, it's very interesting thoughts. And but what I what I really appreciate <clears throat> on this house is that the the main house, the original section, has been left as as it was found without any further alterations mm -hmm. and it looks to me like the the additions that are going on in the back to me personally i think look better than what was there because everything is kind of streamlined now it's not kind of like mm -hmm. one edition built onto another edition which had another edition put on it looks like it was it's all more streamlined now which yeah i think complements the main house uh myself and that's yeah. just my opinion 
Yeah, I actually would agree. It's, and I think the architect would agree too. I think we, uh, you can comment in just a minute, but I think the attempt was to kind of uh, unify the, the design of the structure a bit better. Uh, and lastly, Joe Morgan, any thoughts from you? Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. I, I agree with uh, Chris S on this and uh, I, I think it's a, a very appropriate light touch solution and I have no objection. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, our, let me just finish my notes here. Okay, is there a motion that the structure is preferably preserved? I can make that motion. Okay, that was Biff, right? Yes. Okay, uh, is that seconded? Seconded, this is Joe. Yep. Thank you, Joe. Okay. So uh, the motion is that structure is preferably preserved. A yes vote means that, well, that we it, it is both historically significant and preferably preserved, imposing the one-year demo delay. Um, and a no vote means it's not preferably preserved, which um, uh, has actually, and besides ending this discussion tonight, also has the implication that um, they uh, would not be restricted to even using this particular set of plans. It would it'd mean that they have a they can pretty much do whatever they want, um, as it's not you know considered properly preserved. Anyway, so that that's the implication of this 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 uh, vote. All right. So again, uh, so Biff, your vote on this? Yes. All right. Thank you, Chris Fay. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Joe Morgan. Yes. Thank you, Chris Sotel. Yes. Thank you, uh, Chair agrees. So I don't think we need a whole lot more discussion. I think um, we can probably, someone can probably move that we either, well, uh, but well, let's see. Someone can move that we accept the plans as presented, or if someone has a concern about the plans, they could suggest um, any condition that we feel necessary to impose and then uh, vote on that. So either of those, either either of those things would be um, in 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 order at this point. Chair, this is Joe. I will move that 58 Jefferson plans be accepted as presented. Okay, thank you, Joe. Is there a second for that? Yes, I'll second that. This That's is Biff. It. Yep. Okay, thank you, Biff. And your vote, Biff. Yes. Thank you, Chris Fay. Your vote. Yes. Thank you. Joe Morgan? Yes. Thank you. Chris Sotel? Yes. Well, I think we're unanimous. Um, so um, congratulations to both MTC, Ben, and, and Al, for Al the Biazzo. Um, we, I agree with the comments made by my colleague, uh, Chris Sotel, that um, the, the, the rear of the structure is uh, seems to be much neater with your proposed design. And I also agree with comments made by, I think it was the other Chris, that um, all this is uh, from the street. Uh, it, I don't think people will even barely notice the change other than, of course, while it's actually underway. So the demo, demolition delay, which was imposed a few minutes ago, is lifted and you can proceed to what the other um, approvals or permits or whatever it is you need to do. And the uh, Building Commission will be notified that uh, it's not under a demo delay. And thanks for your time. All right. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Okie doke. Uh, we have another uh, similar hearing. This one is for 71 High Street. Uh, and we have, I um, believe, the architect is Eileen Graff. We've, uh, we've heard from her before. And we've got Doug Duchesne uh, of uh, Finneran and Others, <laughs> sorry, I don't remember the name of the firm. Um, so let's see who's going to be speaking. I see both, both of you have. Uh, we've unmuted both of you on your end. Just, so just decide who's going to speak first. I assume probably uh, Doug. Um, do you want to? So as we'll do the same thing we just did with uh, Jefferson Street. We'll first review the historical significance of the of the structure and take a vote on that, and then depending on how all that discussion and voting goes, we'll uh, proceed from there. So Doug, do you want to give us an outline? I know that um, 
So this is an interesting property with an interesting history, and there was some dispute as to the actual construction date, but I'll let you explain all that. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. If I could go to the next slide, please. Uh, again, for the record, my name is Douglas DeShane. I am an attorney with Finner and Nicholson here in Newburyport. Um, the owners of the property, Stephen and Michelle DeFeo, are, I believe, on, uh, on the meeting as well. Uh, our engineer, Everett Chandler, um, is uh, from Winter GEC LLC, is our engineer and, and developed the site plan for us. And lastly, uh, with us this evening, Aileen Graff from Graff Architects, who will speak to the architectural uh, proposal. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So just to give you a quick project summary, the DeFeos would like to add some living space to their existing home by adding a two-story addition to the rear of the property, including a covered porch. Uh, they would also like to raise the existing structure, uh, excuse me, the existing attached garage and reconstruct it by enlarging the footprint and uh, raising the roof slightly to allow uh, for the creation of a mudroom and storage area in the back of the garage. But also, as you'll hear uh, from Aileen in a moment, uh, the garage, when it was originally built, um, obviously they had much smaller cars back then. Uh, as the garage doors are only seven feet wide and the, the height of the garage uh, is, is very low at the end. So uh, difficult to get cars in there today. Uh, lastly, and I don't think this is relevant to the hearing, but I did want to let you know they are proposing a detached two-car garage to the rear of the lot. Uh, as determined by the zoning enforcement officer, the plan construction requires review and determination from the historic commission pursuant to the demolition delay. And that's why we're here this evening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, just to give you a quick existing conditions. The property has been used as a single family home um, since its construction. Um, however, I do understand uh, that the uh, original home that was on this site uh, was actually uh, used at some point as a convalescent home by a Miss Lydia Barnstead. Um, but in the in the 30s, uh, when the, the property was um, reconstructed, um, it, it was reconstructed as a single family home and it has continued to be used as a single family home uh, since that time. No, um, no evidence. I could find no evidence of any additions or modifications uh, made to the home. So uh, it is pretty much in the exact same condition uh, when it was constructed. However, um, I do have some questions whether the existing shutters um, were done originally. They seem to be of more modern uh, design. Um, the lot itself is pre-existing non-conforming. Uh, however, we're not proposing any changes to the lot. The existing structure is pre-existing non-conforming as to a side yard setback. And again, we're not seeking to uh, modify that. So no change in the use is proposed. The property is a single family residence and will continue to be a single family residence uh, moving forward. So um, there were some, as I mentioned, Mr. Chairman, there were some uh, interesting questions raised about the original construction date of the home. Um, and so in reviewing and doing my homework, um, we I found that they, um, while the town uh, assessor's cards indicate a construction date of 1937, uh, the MACRIS information in the data sheets indicate a, a circa 1950 construction uh, date. However, in, in working with the zoning enforcement officer, um, she determined there was not enough evidence to rely on the 1950 date. And so um, uh, we filed under the demo delay bylaw as uh, that 1937 would constitute over 75 years, although ironically 1950 would not. So. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, restore, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, uh, was there a... Uh, yeah, I think you skipped over you slide five, one? Caitlin. Sorry, Caitlin. Thank you very much. So just to give you a quick outline, I'd like to go through the historical information we were able to collect. Um, and again, I'll give you the information on the conflicting dates, uh, give you some information on the ownership of the home, uh, and then, of course, we can discuss the Newbury uh, Port District data sheets and what they tell us. 
Um, uh, probably the most surprising piece is that um, at the time those sheets were done, the dwelling was deemed intrusive. Um, and I believe that was done in uh, conjunction with um, uh, a MACRIS study uh, done, or you know, the Massachusetts Historic Commission study with respect to the high street historic district. So I, I'll right. present that. Then we'll give you um, an over, I'll give you an overview of the current dwelling, and then Aileen will help in uh, defining for you what we're proposing to change. Of course, the the roof line modification being the the trigger uh, for our being here. Right. So uh, now we could go to that next uh, next slide, and I'll we'll start. So, um, as I understand, the original house was actually built in 1885, and I believe this is a picture of the original house. I, I do need to thank Caitlin for her help in uh, in, in in pointing me to the Newbury um, historic, uh, the Museum of Old Newbury. Um, these are uh, these um, pictures and ads are from. From that museum and, and again uh, Caitlin was very helpful and I, I do very much appreciate it. So as you can see the original home which was built in 1885 uh, uh, beautiful I mean one of the most uh, beautiful turrets I, I've ever seen but um, unfortunately um, in 1937 uh, the home was sold <clears throat> um, it was purchased actually by T. Joseph Mannix uh, and he purchased it from the Newburyport uh, Five Cent Savings Bank through a foreclosure sale. Um, yeah, and as you can see, we, we've got uh, an ad from the um, uh, from the newspaper showing the foreclosure sale uh, in April of uh, 1936. So if we could go to the next um, slide, please. Uh, there was subsequently an, an article um, which um, announced uh, that um, Mr. Mannix um, had uh, purchased the property. Uh, T. Joseph Mannix had purchased the property and, you know, it explains how and who. Uh, and they also mentioned that uh, Mr. Mannix uh, was intending to uh, tear the house down and to build, quote, a modern home in its place um, without delay. And also, as you can see, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, they put an ad in the paper um, advertising for the sale of, um, you know, material salvage from the demolition. So, um, uh, you know, it appears that that's, that's what happened. Um, I did hear, um, uh, my clients did hear from some of the neighbors that perhaps there may have been a fire uh, back in the 30s, uh, late 30s that uh, were part of the reason for redeveloping. Uh, so I did um, contact the fire department to see if they had any records of the fire. Um, they did not have any specific records uh, indicating that a fire had occurred, but they did have records uh, relating to the demolition. So, you know, it all seems like the timeline uh, fits. Uh, um, and so, um, you know, that pretty much my understanding of how things came to be. Uh, of course, um, and, and uh, if we could go to the next slide, I'll, I'll give you a little of the rundown on the on the day, uh, historic um, information that we collected. And here are the uh, historic data sheet for the property. As you can see, um, they do claim uh, circa 1950 design, uh, colonial revival style. Um, and, you know, it was my understanding and, and in discussing the home with Aileen, you know, it appeared to us that the house really does have more of a 1950s appearance than a 1937, but, Again, we are um, held to the information we have, um, and in, in, in being better safe than sorry, we uh, have filed. Um, interestingly enough, I'll point out that the status of the home on the district data sheet uh, was intrusive, um, which is uh, interesting to me. I had never come across anything like that before, but nevertheless, someone determined that the uh, style of that current home was uh, actually intrusive uh, with respect to the historic district. So. Um, if we could go to the next slide, uh, and I'll run through these very quickly, Mr. Chairman. This is just a copy of the uh, MACRIS um, uh, report from the uh, Mass Historical Commission in reviewing the, um, the entire uh, High Street District, which this property is, you know, within the boundaries of that district. But if we can kind of jump down a few slides, um, I guess maybe slide um, uh, uh, 12, please. Or 13, I'm sorry, 13. 
Um, as you can see, this was the plan where they identified all of the historic or homes they felt historically significant within the his High Street Historic District. And if you'll note to the right of the property listed as property number 12 with the dark circle, um, that, is, yes, to the right, that property right there, that is 71 High Street. And you can see that um, uh, at that point, they um, did not seem to want to include it within a, I guess, a, a, a part of the historic district. So the, um, if we could just jump down to, to slide the, just 14, that's yeah, just the, or 13, that's just the extension of the historic district uh, uh, to the, to the um, east or west. Um, so that's sort of beyond where this property is, but it was part of the report, so I included it. And then they did include some pictures of the, the historic district, uh, which is slide uh, 15, please. But uh, our ho home is uh, not involved in any of those pictures. So to the next slide, please. And I apologize, this is on an, uh, you know, it's not ro um, rotated correctly. I, I had the hardest time and <laughs> so I just included it. Uh, and to make it easy for you, this is the, you know, the historic building detail for 71 uh, High Street. And as you can see, they do list it as circa uh, 1950 and, and don't uh, provide any historic name. They don't provide any other different definite uh, information. But again, given the fact that they uh, deemed the property intrusive, I, I assume this is uh, what you would normally see. So that is, um, a gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the sort of the compilation of my historic um, uh, uh, um, uh, research. Um, always fascinating and, and do appreciate the help I received from um, the planning staff. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, if you would like, I can then just give you a quick overview of the, the property as it is today. Um, or do you me, wanna- What would that include? Uh... Uh, just three pictures. <laughs> oh, you mean like, yeah, like our existing conditions. Yeah, so this, conditions. Is, this sure. is the, 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 the current, um, uh, a picture of the current the home as it stands currently. Um, uh, as you can see, um, the, the main structure and the garage to the right side, uh, which we are proposing to uh, raise and rebuild the garage, um, are brick. Um, uh, there is a small, and uh, the, in fact, the addition to the left is also brick, but there's so much window and um, the wonderful uh, shutters that um, you know, it's kind of obscured. But so that's the front picture. If we could go to the next slide, please. That's from High Street, correct? Yes, from High Street. So yes. this is a picture from the rear. Um, and I, I, I'll, I'll give you two rear photos. One, so you can see the property uh, to the left, uh, well, to the right from High Street is this, uh, the white structure there. Uh, I do know that um, in, the, in the ad, um, that we showed earlier, they did actually identify uh, the homes on either side to be homes of Higgins and Thurlow. Um, I'm I'm not sure whether um, you know the, they are still in those families or otherwise, but uh, that would be, I believe, what was at one time the Higgins home. And if we could go to the next slide, uh, this is again a rear photo, um, and it shows the property to the left, which would be Thurlow. Um, or Higgins, if I got them back up. But um, as you can see, on one of the reasons I sort of focused on these rear photos is that um, all of the, the work we're proposing, the addition is proposed to be put on the back of the home. Uh, the roof of the addition will not be above the current home uh, height of the, the main roof on the house. The garage, which we are proposing to um, take down and, and elongate towards the street, um, um, and then raise the roof a little in order to accommodate that uh, wider footprint or deeper footprint um, is here. So the roof that we will be modifying is shown here on the left of the garage. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, so again, the proposed changes were to remove and, and raise that existing two-car attached garage on the right hand side as we look from high street they want to construct a new two-car garage it will be slightly larger and it will be pulling the uh, footprint forward towards high street a little bit and increasing the roof height to accommodate um, a small mudroom and storage to the rear of the garage and also to provide 
a little more than uh, 19 feet of depth for uh, storage of a car, um, which is what we're dealing with now. The, the two-story addition proposed in the back of the house uh, and the covered porch are on the back. And again, will be uh, lower than the existing roof height. And then again, uh, although not relevant, I did want to let you know that they're proposing a new mm -hmm. garage to the rear of the property. Um, one more slide, and then I'm going to turn things over to Aileen or Mr. Chairman. We can stop and discuss the historic significance. Yeah, we can. Yeah, that's so what we usually do. The last this. slide, I think maybe I can wrap it up for you. Um, this is the footprint, uh, excuse me, the um, site plan showing the footprint. And if we could just enlarge that a little. Um, I can so if you can see the uh, the heavy dark line that starts on the right side of the house uh, and and goes right there that is the proposed new garage you can see we've moved the footprint forward and then that dark line continues around to encompass the um, proposed rear addition and the covered porch um, so that is the footprint of the proposed uh, work. So with that, Mr. Chairman, again, um, I'm, we're happy to discuss, um, you know, your determination. Mm -hmm. okay. At some point, if necessary, um, Aileen can give us a, um, you know, a rundown on the proposed demolition and and work. Yeah, thank thank you, uh, Doug. Um, a couple of quick comments I'll make right off the bat is that um, I'm not surprised it's it's considered intrusive. Um, and if you look at those photos, uh, what they, uh, well, you can just see a little piece of the houses on either side. All along High Street, as you know, you've got those uh, federal period houses from the period of New Ports prosperity in the late uh, 18th and early 19th centuries. And there was a bit of a uh, economic bust for a while, but then there was another somewhat somewhat boomy period late in the later in the 19th century and you had uh, like the house to the side that had the mansard roof a later um uh 19th century uh structure and um so that's you know the high street historic district that you mentioned you know is is that you know the the remarkable uh preservation of so many of those houses from those two periods especially so many from the federal period, very, you know, one of the, the best concentrations in the whole country. So so compared to all those, this little tidy little brick house, although it's, you know, it's a perfectly nice little brick house is definitely <laughs> out of place, uh, so to speak. And the other thing I wanted to do, so that's the, the bit about intrusive. And um, what's the other thing I was going to say? Um, uh, I guess I lost it. Uh, the um, oh, about the dates. Uh, I think, given the newspaper reporting of the sale of basically, you know, the, the well, the, the sale of the property in thirty-seven or thirty-six, whatever that was, and then the auctioning off of you know the dismantled house. I think we can. I think uh, Jennifer Blanchet's determination that it's more likely to have been constructed around thirty-seven or eight is is probably correct because mm -hmm. i don't think it was going to sit vacant for an you know over to me um 12 or years or so anyway so that so i think her determination was is more likely uh correct in that one um so that's that uh it's an interesting property. I've, you know, people have have noted that particular property and said, "Hmm." It reminds me of that Sesame Street song. One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> you know, when you see this house on High Street. Okay, so um, panelists, uh, what do you think? Anyone have a question for uh, anyone or a comment? I can. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, yeah. Um... I, I think, uh, I like uh, yourself. I every time I would see this this house, I, it's obvious why it was labeled intrusive. Especially if you look to when that study was done, which would have been right around 1980. Um, you know, they if they're thinking this was from 1950, you know, this 30 year old home, it would definitely be intrusive. Mm -hmm. However, if if it really is from the you know the late 30s. Um, to me, that it, it almost becomes it's a little more intriguing in the fact that if, if those are like the original garages from nineteen late nineteen thirties, that the vehicles that would have pulled into there 
um, versus what they are now. Um, it's, it's just interesting to think of it that way. And um, uh, now that we're, as we kind of discussed with these other homes that are just starting to hit that 75 year mark, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think we might have to start looking at what the kind of the importance of this, this uh, automotive, automotive uh, architecture, if you will. <laughs> um, and, and, and just quickly on this point, um, it, you talking about the size, uh, how, you know, the modern cars don't fit in there. Um, High and Mighty uh, by uh, Keith Brandshire so from about year 2000. Uh, I, I just had to go pull it off my book, uh, my shelf. It's, it, it basically describes how SUVs have, have, have taken over uh, and, and used some real uh, sketchy uh, uh, ways to get around uh, regulations and, and made us all buy these larger cars <laughs> so that won't fit in these new garages. But I digress. Um, but it's a, it's a it's a good read. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, the it's it's real interesting to learn about the you know the it's unfortunate that the that old home uh, Victorian home is gone. Uh, but but I think if this is truly from the late thirties, it does um, it it does make it a little interesting. I think yeah, um, and from that perspective. Yeah, and and to your point, Biff, um, I would agree. You know, the even the uh, secretary's guidelines and stuff talk about when change well they mainly discuss in the context of changes made to historic properties let's say you had a let's say you had a uh, structure a house that was built in uh, let's say 1780 and then uh, someone put an addition or let's take my place you know 17 mid 1780s with an addition about it's about 1870 something well that addition even though it's not quote original to the original structure is historic in its own right, right due to its its own age and the fact that it's been there so long and and is illustrative of the time right. and i think that uh you know to your point is that this this particular house makes an interesting comment on its time that i i'm gonna guess that this guy maddox who was a railroad clerk had said probably didn't couldn't afford the, either the taxes or the heating bill or whatever, and was perfectly content, didn't like the design maybe, and was content to tear it down, right. sell it off the pieces and build a nice, tidy little home for himself. Uh, and, you know, and, whatever. And that, but that's and that description, different. and that description saying in the ad, saying that, you know, they want something modern right. um, would fit yeah. into this. Like, look, there's, you can put two cars in this house. Yeah. I mean, at the time, that's, that was amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the latest uh, thing. Yeah. All right. Thanks, anyway, Biff. Thank any, you. Other, any other comments from the panel? Um, yeah. Yep. Did some more observation. Uh, uh, is that Chris Sartell? Your audio is coming that, uh, through a little choppy, Chris. Uh, can you start again? Okay. Um, I was going to say the difference time between how that was there this one is only 50 years so imagine how saying that a house from 50 years ago is not, doesn't have value uh, what i mean to say is that uh, with a short period of time i mean the old house and this house but now we look at it as gorgeous house taken down so that we could put it up but at the time, it was a difference of 50 years. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, I think, and yeah, your audio was a bit choppy there, but I, but I think we got the gist of what you were saying that, you know, try to put, put ourselves mentally back in the time frame of the 30s when that was, that was done. And of course, that was, you know, depression era too. So maybe, you know, who, who knows what the combination was, the style, condition, cost of maintenance, you know, who knows what went into the decisions, but yeah. Um, if there had been a historical commission around at the time and with in these various ordinances, uh, I probably would guess it probably probably have some opposition to tearing down that house. Okay, well, we need to decide if it's historically significant or not. Um, if um there's two ways we could do this we could we could take a vote is it historically significant and preferably preserved we could uh 
we could, or we could, or we could make it split it into two decisions: is it historically significant, yes or no, and then, and then decide if it's preferably or excuse me, I misspoke, considered for preservation or not, which would bring us to discuss the um, the demo plans and so on. Which we could do what we if if we feel that what they want to do is is uh, not going to have a an adverse impact on the historical. Um, value of this particular property you know then then we can approve the uh, their plans uh, if we say it's not either it's not historically significant or not considered for preservation then then we don't have any oversight over the plans so what do you guys think would anyone care to make uh, a motion uh one way or the other i'm thinking we could take a motion uh, that it's historically significant and considered for preservation what do you think well, and I'll move that the, I'll, this is Chris Fay. I'll move that the property is historically significant. Okay. So you want to, so, I'm sorry? And preferably preserved. Okay. Well, at this point, it's just considered for preservation. Okay. okay. Uh, so it would be considered for preservation at this considered. point, Chris, because we, right, then we, we would take the vote about preferably preserved after the uh, okay. hearing. Okay. So the motion is that it's historically significant and to be considered for preservation. Is there a second for that? I'll second that. All right. Thanks, Biff. Okay. So one of these days I'll change the order. Um, so Biff, your vote? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Chris Fay? Yes. Thank you. Joe Morgan? No. Okay. Chris Sotel? Yes. Okay. Uh, Chair, um, I'm going to vote yes. Um, and because uh, I want to, talk a little bit more about the, the plans. And I do think that um, there's some historical significance to this house, even though I'll, I'll come right up front and say that I don't, as far as what I've heard seen so far, I don't have any st strong objections to what they uh, what the plans call for. But why don't I turn it back over to um, the, our, uh, the owner, uh, uh, the attorney, Doug, to Shane and, and Aileen Graff. And by the way, Aileen, if, I hope I haven't been mispronouncing your name, Aileen, for a while. I, I assume it, it is Aileen Graff. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Yes, it's it's actually, it, with the name spelled like mine, I get I get it pronounced many, many ways. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you, I like to tell people, just think of it as a silent A. So, um, so oh, I- Oh, okay. So it is Aileen. All right, that's because I thought that's how you introduced yourself. Okay, very good. Well- who, who's going to speak, you or Doug? Um, I'm happy to speak since um, okay. since we're now on on talking about what's being proposed. So thank okay. you very much. Um, so so I'll bring you through what we're proposing here. As mentioned, that garage on the right is the area um, that we're trying to improve and bring a little bit closer to um, some space that can can address some of the more modern this uh, 2023 modern um, in in function. And so while generally speaking, it's remaining in the same location, the scale of it is just going to increase a bit. Ideally, we would have loved to have kept it back so that the front face of this uh, garage structure could be where the existing one is, but we're up against zoning constraints on the back side, so we really couldn't bring it any keep it the front face at that at that existing location. Um, likewise, um, adding it allowed us with that opportunity a little bit room for a mudroom. I don't know if you can see that little archway, but on the existing drawing up above, yes. While the garage is deemed attached, that's really outdoor space. So the goal was to create a, a you know enclosed connection from the garage into the house and uh, um, heated, uh, excuse me, uh, conditioned space um, that they then don't have to go outside into the elements before getting into the house. Um, oh. So as you can see on the right, that- I'm sorry, I just uh, want to be clear. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sure. I, I mean, uh, just yeah. I'm going to be clear on something. So that arched opening, that's actually uh, uh, open to the elements, so to speak? It is, correct. Oh, okay. so, so Mr. Chair, you'd be seeing to the backyard right, right? Okay. right currently. Thanks, sorry. Go ahead. 
Okay. Um, so, um, so no changes on the on the main house really, other than sort of taking an opportunity to uh, lengthen the two uh, first floor windows. They're seen and shown as a panel on the on the top drawing, and that's a change that we're proposing just to lengthen um, the the sort of formal spaces and their and their windows um, fenestration out. Um, also, a change to the front elevation is the is the uh, front entry. So currently, it's got columns. It's it's kind of uh, it, it feels really sort of heavy and clunky when you're in there. Um, and what we'd like to do is have something that's more sort of uh, in the tradition of a, a glass vestibule, as you see common in our town. So we would like to just reconstruct some of those walls so that we can provide more glazing um, and have it feel sort of light and open. Um, but otherwise, it's the removal of, of the shutters, as you see, and then also just changing the window um, uh, divisions to be, instead of six over six, to be six over ones. Mm -hmm. And then if we could go to the next slide, Caitlin. Here we could see the uh, side views. Um, I'll start with the top left. This is the one that you will notice the, the biggest change with this uh, garage um, uh, being rebuilt. And you could see the proportions changing. So to give you an idea of the existing garage, as mentioned, the, the garage doors are pretty small, seven, seven by seven. But as you move towards the back, that roof is sloping so that if you're standing on the interior, uh, it, it, I'm 5'3", and I'm getting close to hitting my head there. So it's really rather small in scale, not just for length of car, but it's just sort of occupying that space, never mind the length. So um, the building too, because it's brick, isn't, uh, is, is shy of 19 feet. I think it's 20 foot structure. So it's, you know, it's more like, you know, 18, six in what's available for say parking space, probably even less. Um, so that was another challenge to it. And as you could see on the bottom left drawing is the addition, uh, the rebuilt structure to allow for both uh, car parking and then a little bit of mudroom space on the rear. Um, so we kept the same gable, but in order to sort of uh, lengthen, we've got a little bit more height to it um, than the existing. And then on the top right, you can see that sloped, again, the far view top on the top right, but the left of the main house, there's that garage. And then on the bottom right drawing, you could see in, uh, the two-story addition that we are proposing on the back. And that's just on the, uh, on the, on the main building. Um, on the first floor, it's just adding, it's 11 feet um, extending from the back existing back plane, um, just to add a little bit more room for the kitchen space. And upstairs, it's adding a little bit more room for the primary suite. Um, already discussed this this house is very modest you know it's it's just shy of of 2200 square feet so um, we're we're simply just adding a little bit more 600 square feet of space just to help improve some of the functions in the house so they didn't you know the goal was never to have a huge home they love the size of it but they just need a little bit a little bit more breathing room from what exists today and if we could go to the next slide. And here's a view from the back. Um, I'll start on um, by discussing there's that two story space. Again, first floor adding um, some, some living space, kitchen living. Um, upstairs is the primary bedroom. Um, following the gables, the pitch of the existing gabled roof. Um, the structure, any of the new structures are proposed to be wood frame construction um, with cedar collaborates. Um, we intend to, all the windows will be replaced as you, as I mentioned with six over ones, but then on the back side, they've gotten a little more glassy um, to the private side of the property. Um, and that back side on the left shows where the mudroom entry could be from the driveway side. Um, the driveway, I don't, uh, if you're not familiar, goes past the, while it approaches the 
uh, two car garage that's going to be attached. It also goes past the structure and has a little bit of a turnaround on the backside. So thus the uh, natural sort of flow from the backyard to enter a mudroom on that side. Um, if, if I could also just quick comment, you know, the intent, there's some damage to the, um, they've been getting some leaking through the um, uh, slate roof. So they will be sort of in this process, sort of up, updating that in order to address the leaking. Um, and, and, and they'd like to put at, uh, architectural shingles and that would match throughout the prop project, uh, the new and the old. Um, they do want to address some sort of water. Um, it's an interesting flat roof over that sunroom. Um, there's, it's actually like a parapet wall. There's some internal drain over there. So it's kind of a curious um, detail that they managed over there when they built this, but um, also addressing some um, what's happening over there with that drainage. Um, but I believe that touches on everything, but I am happy to speak to any, um, answer any questions should the board have any. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Eileen. Well, while my fellow panelists think about what they might wanna ask, um, I do have, I have one overriding question. Uh, well, a couple of questions, but they both relate to the windows. It yes. looks like you're replacing virtually all the windows. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So uh, have you specified with what you're replacing them? Uh, yes, they would be um, a, um, a double hung, a Matthews Brothers double hung, um, double pane, sorry, um, window in the back, they would be um, uh, as shown casements, but those m could potentially be changed, but not all operating. Uh, okay, you're talking about those, the, the vertical windows that are on the first floor in the back now? Correct, yes. yes. Okay, uh, so, um, but throughout the, like even the front and the other parts where they're, you know, normal size windows, like mm -hmm. the six over ones, yeah. I assume that was simply a style decision to make it six over one, which I could see arguing either way, but you know, not, 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 not certainly in keeping with the era of the construction of the house. What, uh, what kind of windows would those be? Oh, those, those are Matthews brothers. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Matthews probably there's double hung windows. Okay. So, uh, what about the mountains? The, uh, those are simulated divided light. Okay. So, so they have the, um, three-dimensional mountains. Not, Correct. not just the not just the within the uh, glass. Correct. Yes. I see. Okay. S spacer bar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. As if you were listening to the first the discussion on Jefferson Street, you know, I asked basically the same question. It's uh, it's it's a thing I've got about uh, windows and and uh, uh, month, the three-dimensional mountains. Okay, well, it's enough for me. Uh, how about any any members of the panel have a comment? Um, I do see Chris Faye, you're unmuted. Did you wanna make a comment? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Okay. I, just didn't... I see Joe, your hand is up. Perhaps you'd like to make a comment? Yeah, thank you. Um, sure. I'm uh, curious, What is what's the zoning uh, district here? This, uh, this is, wanna... go ahead, Doug. Um, yes, I believe it's a, a high street, uh, HS1. Uh, um, what's unique about the zoning is, um, and you may know, uh, yeah, that'll, it's right there. Um, it is the HSRA, high street residential. And you may recall that some time ago, what the city did, in, and I believe in an effort to prevent people from carving off or developing additional homes on the back of these, you know, elongated high street uh, lots, they've actually imposed a required 300 foot setback <laughs> to the rear lot line. So <laughs> in, 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 in meeting that requirement, we can't push the back of the garage any closer, which is why we had to come to the front. 
and uh, the, the addition on the back was limited to 11 feet so that we wouldn't mm -hmm. violate that 300 foot setback. Um, it, I think it's uh, interesting to note that you, you've had to apply for a variance for this lot uh, because of its size. Is that correct? No, no, no. We, uh, the, in terms of the size, we're pre-existing non-conforming. You're not conforming. Oh, very good. Yeah, it's but the required size, the the re, the um, required size by zoning is sixty thousand square feet, right? Yeah, so we're at like fifty six thousand odd okay. feet. So we're pretty close, but it and that's that's almost uh, an acre and a half somewhere in that zone. Yeah. Um, and you've got essentially what looks like a suburban house sitting on the site. You're going to make some garage improvements. Um, I, you know, I, I know this is outside of the, the our bracketed conversation here on on historical uh, criteria, but I find personally it's a crying shame. It's a real shame um, uh, that uh, such a large property could not be uh, made available through zoning for uh, much needed housing. I mean, I think this is a real crime uh, to keep this kind of house uh, an intrusive house, regardless of what you do to it, on a on a lot that's sixty thousand square feet, without providing some better public amenity, even if it's through a developed housing uh, solution. But I think this is really not the way Newburyport really wants to go or should go. Sorry, I'm editorializing, and I'll leave my comments there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Uh, Anyone else have anything to say? Okay, yeah, I, but Joe, uh, it, you're right. It is kind of out, it is outside our purview as a historical commission. But I, 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 I appreciate your your comments and thoughts. I'll just make a very brief comment that uh, my neighbor here um, is is an was an architect by training, a uh, young guy, and um, he he often had similar opinions that he thought that we'd be better off to have areas of open space and areas of denser uh, res residency rather than have you know all these little all these little uh, lots and private houses and so forth but anyway we digress um mr Bells, i see your hand up did you want to comment yeah uh, just a, a question about the um the brick uh treatment uh what's what's happening to it because obviously the, the penetration of the windows uh, at least in the back is going to change and then uh just a question about why what what was the choice of using uh non-brick for the for the addition it's okay if i answer that yeah yeah, yeah. please do um sure so if we from the it's a great question because we sort of deliberated over what would be the right solution there. Um, on as as in, as far as the additions on the backside, that really the uh, to start with that in the main form, really the brick, the main brick home is staying intact. The only change, other than the overlap of the two-story piece, is just at that lower level um, with the 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 triple underneath the single uh, double hung. That's the only change in the brick opening happening to the original structure. And then with the two-story addition, we did feel strongly that, you know, we we actually stepped it in. It's hard to see as it's a mere eight inches from the gable end of the main mm -hmm. house, the left side, but it mm -hmm. does, that 11 foot bump out does step in from the brick corner. So you, so that it sort of has a, a little bit of relief it, when the uh, wood structure engages with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so that seemed sort of, I think, architecturally the right thing to do to engage on the backside. It's mostly glazing anyway, um, as you can see. So that seemed like it needed to be light and of wood frame. But then as we study the garage structure, that became a little bit more of a dilemma because if it were brick, um, the brick of this house is kind of um, curious, I'll say. Um, it's it's a um, and it's less it's less of the brick itself, but it's actually I think even curious in the the mortar that's used. It's not generally speaking, it isn't um, 
I'm going to reference the ones downtown here or or the one on Middle Street that was just cleaned up, you know, um, it's not that level of brick home. Um, it's, you know, again, 1930s, it's 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 fine, um, but it wasn't something that I felt when we went next to it to add on with a brick structure. I was worried about how that would contrast or play out. Would it would it sort of be a. Um, was it maybe difficult to match the, yes yeah the, the, tone, exactly. the tone of it okay. the tone of it and so then I thought well then maybe not go there you know if we stay in a wood structure then um then we don't have that challenge of of, yeah, of what it does to the original structure original brick mm -hmm. and, so that's why we ended up with the wood that that makes a lot of sense um so the is the brick staying brick it's not being painted the brick is staying brick yes okay okay thank you. That's, that's a and great. and a quick clarifying question i mean it sounded like you said the window openings are, are not changing in the, in the brick structure at least on the front and the sides i'm sorry the, as far as uh the the two on the front are lengthening so i apologize if i neglect I okay forgot about oh, on the first floor. Just left lengthening but in appearance it's actually taking up that space that you read that panel on the existing right. house um so in in a lot of ways it's probably going to be rather unnoticed in comparison mm -hmm. okay and the other window openings like in the second floor are the same. Those, rem those remain the same correct and on the sunroom those are all staying the same okay uh caitlin i wonder if you can go Back to this photo of the front, just so we can kind of so we can see what those panels look like again. Uh, I see, yeah, they're partly concealed by the bushes, but I see them now. There's like a white panel below the uh, window there. That's what you're referring to, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, it looks like this is similar treatment on the uh, the little wing. It's off on the uh, eastern side there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, this is a public hearing, so I do need to allow for public comment. Uh, not many people in attendance, so I'm going to guess we might not get any, but still the same. We will allow it. So let's see if we do have any. Um, I'll, temp I'll open a public comment period. Um, and if so, again, if you are out there and wish to make a comment, please use the Zoom controls to raise your hand so we know about it and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'll allow a few seconds for anyone that might wish to do that. Okay. Um, well, we're, well, we're, we're waiting. Just a quick question for for you, Doug. I think did you did you get any feedback from any of the butters on your uh, proposal here? Have they been appraised of it? Yes, Mr. Chairman. My um, my clients have reached out to the neighbors. Um, as you know, um, depending on how things go, um, we will be appearing before the uh, um, planning board as well. So, you know, we did want to get input from all of the neighbors. Um, we've discussed the project with the neighbors to the uh, direct right side of the home. Mm -hmm. um, my clients were able to sit down with them and, and discuss the, the um, you know, the plans, and they have no problems um, in meeting the neighbors to the left. Uh, my clients were able to meet with them or meet them. Uh, they went over and introduced themselves and, and gave them um, a, a quick rundown on what they were proposing to do. Um, and they uh, made plans. They're making plans to actually go have a sit down with their neighbors and go over the plans in detail. But, um, you know, he didn't indicate they didn't indicate any concerns, but they weren't able to put together their coffee meeting. Uh, before this, before the historic commission, but we have reached out to them. We've made them aware, and uh, with the uh, again, the neighbor to the right has said um, that they were fine with it. We have no neighbors to the back, uh, and the neighbor to the left, um, again, knowing we were coming here, um, is I don't believe has come here to fight us um, or, or oppose. But um, we are scheduled to go sit down and meet, or my clients scheduled to go sit with them and. Uh, you know, and go over it in greater detail so that we could at least mm -hmm. have a um, uh, a written opinion yep. from them uh, for the next meeting. Okay. All right. Thanks. Well, I don't see any public comment being uh, requested, so I will close the public comment period. Um, so we've already kind of had some discussion. 
Does anyone have any other comments to make before we uh, vote on the, so, um, so I think we're in the same position as we were before. Um, uh, we're first voting on whether it's preferably preserved, which uh, we, we could then follow by a vote on uh, approval or not of the, of the proposed plans. Uh, if the vote that is preferably preserved fails, then um, then they we don't they don't need then there's no demo delay and they don't need uh, the second vote. So uh, I'll, the chair was will accept either some question, comment, or motion uh, that the structure be preferably preserved. I'll make a motion that the uh, the home is preferably preserved. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Biff. Uh, is there a second for that? Seconded. Okay, I heard Joe first. I heard another one yep. there that may have been Chris Sotel. All right, so uh, the motion is that it's preferably preserved, which would impose a one-year demo delay, which we could then lift if we so choose with a, a, a vote to come in a few minutes. So at least that's what I would expect. We would at least have that vote. Okay, so uh, Biff, your vote on that, yes or no? Yes. Okay, thank you. Chris Fay? Yes. Thank you. Joe Morgan? No. Okay. No. Uh, Chris Sotel? Yes. Okay. And the, the chair is also a yes. So we uh, have, a, have a, a demo delay for the moment anyway, which will either stay or be relieved depending on um, what we do next. Um, We've kind of seen the plans. Uh, does anyone else? Is there any other question about the plans? We've kind. Of, I think we've pretty much talked about it. Um, I'm going to step out of that a little bit to the side of my usual role. And uh, what I'd like to do is propose th that the motion be that um, the that we accept the plans as presented, with the condition that. Uh, at the, as the architect has stated that the, the the windows with divided lights like the six over ones, the new windows do have the um, three dimensional um, aspect as, as described that, that that would be um, a condition or requirement. Just want to make sure that that's in there because uh, where they are replacing um, the windows that presumably were original to the to the structure, including on the front of the house, which otherwise isn't having any changes. So uh, to I'll restate that a little bit more cleanly, that we accept the plans as presented, along with the uh, description of the windows as presented, that they have uh, uh, their simulated divided light, simulated divided light windows that is uh, three dimensional muttons. So um, so the chair has proposed that. I'll put that in there. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second that. That's Biff. Okay. Thank you, Biff. Okay, uh, what's your vote on that, Biff? A yes vote would uh, accept the plans with that one condition and uh, relieve the uh, demo delay. And no yes. vote. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fay? Chris um, Fay? Yeah. I think I'm going to vote. I think I'm going to vote no. Okay. Uh, Mr. Morgan? Yes. Okay. Mr. Sotel? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, chair is um, I'm I'm a yes on that. I I th and I'll I'll briefly state why. I think that um, I, I like the fact that the house is basically staying there. Its appearance isn't going to change all that much. Be you know it will still it's still going to be intrusive in the sense that it's not. Uh, one of the federal period or l latter 19th century period homes that uh, the whole that high street ridge is noted for so it uh, but it's it's been intrusive for for a long time and I think it's um you know until the day comes when someone decides that you know makes an application to demolish it altogether and maybe build as Joe was saying build something large or whatever you know that maybe that'll probably be for some future commission but um I think you know it will remain uh, as it is. I, I, I certainly don't think there'll be an adverse impact to either the neighborhood or the structure itself from the changes that they've proposed. Um, so that's why I voted to uh, approve the plans. Um, 
Okay, so what that means, uh, you well, you, you probably know, uh, uh, Mr. Deshane and, and Eileen, that means that uh, the demo delay ha it gets lifted and you can then proceed with your other, you said planning board, is the planning board or the ZBA you need ZBA, to ZBA, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Yep, okay, that's fine. Okay, well, thank you for your time and attention tonight, and uh, I guess you're all set for now. With thank us, you, Mr. Anyway. Chairman, members of the board, we certainly appreciate your time as well. Have a nice evening. You're quite welcome. Okay, let's move along, see if we can, um, actually, I'm surprised I'm doing this well, given my blood donation today. So, um, just a, a couple of quick things. There are no updates in the planning director, because the planning director is not here. Uh, updates from the chair, just a real quick uh, reminder of the, April, the excuse me, May 4th City Hall Auditorium. Uh, Chris, Andrew, Biff, and myself had uh, said that they uh, plan to attend. Um, so, I've been in touch with the you know, the mayor's office, they're, they're preparing things. They're going to have a um, sort of a handout, uh, which will be available both online and they'll have a couple of printed copies for people who can't just scan a QR code or whatever. And it'll have things like um, the basic facts that you can get from our page on the city's website, like, uh, you know, the, num the members, the membership, where when it meets, um, the terms, uh, what, what the mission of the commission is, and so on. So just a reminder for that. Uh, so What's the, I'll, yeah, I'm sorry. What was the date of that again? Uh, May 4th. Great. Great. Thank you. Uh, City Hall Auditorium, six o'clock to seven thirty. Uh, and lastly, um, a new applicant has a, uh, for membership has popped up. Um, so, and it's just getting started in the process. They did meet with the mayor on Monday. Uh, actually, we're told that the, the commission had a full roster, which actually I had a discussion with the mayor's office. They realized that that was an error because we do have the opportunity to have two alternates. So, for example, on tonight, we have that alternate member, had he been here, would be um, functioning as a, as a regular member because we had two absences. So I think it's, it's uh, would be a good thing to have one or two alternates. Anyway, so uh, that process has just begun. More on that to follow. The uh, last business, uh, two last items of official business, and uh, one is approval of the minutes from the 23rd of March. Um, I uh, so let's see, Mr. Bernhardt was here then, but he's not here tonight. So is there a motion to, hopefully you had a chance to review them, the people, the, the those of us that were here on the 23rd, I believe that's Biff, Chris, Joe, yep. and myself, uh, both Chris's actually. Um, is there a motion to approve of those minutes? Sure. Uh, yeah, this is Beth. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from March Thank 23rd. You. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. That was Chris Sartell, I believe, right? Okay. Um, yes. Sir. Okay. Uh, so, you, Mr. Mr. Baus, your vote? Yes. Okay, thanks. Chris Frey? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Thanks. Chris Sartell? Yes. Thank you. And the chair also approves. I uh, did review the minutes. They looked fine. Um, unless someone has any other question or comment, we can have a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. That sounds, that sounds like Christopher Fay with an ambitious motion to adjourn. And who seconded? Someone, I heard a second. Joe. Second. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Baus, your vote. Biff? Yes, I just wanted to keep you all in suspense for a second. <laughs> I see. You, uh, you, su you I just, succeeded. Just Chris, trying to Mr. find the mute button. Okay, Mr. Fay. Yes. Thank you. Joe Morgan? Yes. Okay, Chris Sotel? Yes. Thank you. Your audio is fine again, Chris. I don't know what happened to your audio before. It was all chopped up, but it's it, now again, it's fine again. Anyway, and the chair is yes. So that officially. You know it oh, maybe it's whenever you say something more than one word, because just then it was chopped up too. Anyway, we'll, we'll address that right. next week. Next week, if it does that again, we, we, what we can try is um, turning off your video to reduce the, the bandwidth requirement of your connection. Maybe it was something like that. Anyway, okay. So thank you all very much for your time and attention. That officially draws the meeting to a close. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you all. <laughs>
<laughs> see you all waving good night and I bid yeah. you good night and uh, see you in a couple of weeks probably. Good night. Good okay. night. Thank you, everyone. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Good night, folks. Good night.